my name is Jay Moulton. I work at RF Exposure Lab. We do SAR testing at our facility. We did the SAR testing on the R2L to determine how much of the SAR is reduced by applying the R2L to a cell phone. The R2L device has an LED light that tells you when it's functional. This is very unique in, in all of the devices that we have tested in the past 10 years. The R2L was also the very first device that we did any testing on and was the first one that we saw that actually reduced SAR and was functional as a device. This is an actual test of the R2L on an iPhone 5. The lab and the methodology are approved by the FCC and federal government to measure our exposure to cell phone radiation. The robot in the foreground operates a sensor probe that measures radiation at various points. It's precisely controlled to ensure repeatable results to guarantee that the readings are accurate. Beneath, we see an ordinary iPhone that's fully charged and turned on, and directly above it, between the phone and the sensor arm of the robot, a silicone membrane that simulates the actual size and density of the human head and brain tissue. What the machine is doing is measuring the amount of radiation emitted by the phone that is penetrating the simulated head. And as you can see, under normal circumstances, without an R2L on the iPhone 5, the sensor is showing that 1.253 watts per kilogram of cell phone radiation is absorbed at 1 gram density of brain matter, and that 0.961 watts per kilogram of cell phone radiation is absorbed at 10 grams density of brain matter, potentially dangerous amount of radiation to be exposed to day after day. Now let's see the identical demonstration with an R2L installed on the same phone. What's happening now is that much of the phone's radiation that was penetrating the head is now being absorbed by the R2L and stored as electricity. When the R2L is fully saturated, it discharges that electricity in the form of harmless light in order to continue collecting excess radiation. It's a little like wiping up a spill with a sponge. Once the sponge is saturated, you have to squeeze it out to absorb more. Except it's all going on in nanoseconds. Now let's look at the SAR reading. It's dropped to 0.484 watts per kilogram of cell phone radiation absorbed at 1 gram density of brain matter and just 0.38 watts per kilogram of cell phone radiation absorbed at 10 grams of brain matter. That's a 70% reduction in cell phone radiation exposure, without a doubt a dramatic difference in a single use. Now just think about how much you use your cell phone and how much of a difference the R2L can make in the amount of radiation absorbed by your brain and body over a period of time, day after day.